Today, I'm going to show you a complete beginner's guide of the iPhone 16. I'm going to show you some of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features allowing you to leave this video as an iPhone 16 expert. This particular model is an iPhone 16 Pro Max, but the setup process is similar if you have an iPhone 16. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the box. On the front, you've got an image of the device itself, and on the side, it simply says iPhone on each of the sides. It's got an Apple logo there, and an Apple logo there, and on the back, all of your information. So let's go ahead and open this up. You've got two pull straps, one at the top right here that you can pull off, and one at the bottom. So we'll go ahead and rip those pull straps off. We've got the first one, and now we'll work on the second one on the very bottom. Once you've ripped those two off, you can go ahead and put the box flat down and pull up on the box and you can see that it starts to lift up and the phone uh, can come out. So you may have to jiggle it out here, it looks like you can pull it up just like that. And now we're presented with the brand new iPhone. So you open the box, there's nothing in the top here, it just has a cutout for the camera. I'm going to go ahead and put the box and the straps to the side and take a look at this gorgeous new product. Um, so this is the black finish and it's got a pull strap, a pull tab. All you have to do is just lift it up just like that and you can pull out your brand new iPhone. I'm going to put the iPhone to the side. Let's dive right into the packaging and see what we get. So we can pull out first. We've got this lovely braided cable. So this is our charging cable. It's USB-C to USB-C. We can go ahead and open it up just like this. And we're presented with those end connectors. You can pull them out you can rip them out and you've got your charging cable. So this is gonna be what you use to charge your iPhone. You will need to buy a separate brick or plug it into a, a power brick that you already have, but make sure it has this USB-C in component to it because the new iPhones are USB-C only, no more lightning. Um, so that's super cool. They, they made that switch last year. So it comes with this charging cable inside. You can see this lovely uh, circular design. We can pull open the iPhone um, the quick start guide, we can open that up here and it has some, you know, legal paperwork and it says you no longer need a physical SIM card. You can activate your eSIM during the iPhone setup. Um, so this was pretty simple. I don't think you can, can open this at all, um, but it's got some legal paperwork right here for us to check out. And that is all that's in the box. Um, there is absolutely nothing else left. It's got a nice recycling logo to let us know that we can recycle this. And from here, we're good to go ahead and check out the contents of our phone. So I'm going to put the box to the side. I'm going to take the charging cable. I'm going to show you how to plug that up. Um, but let's take a tour of the iPhone. So you've got this paper filled. You know, there's no more plastic covering the iPhone. There's no more plastic in the box. It helps out with the environmental goals. So what it does on this paper is it outlines all of the different buttons and um, you know, features of the phone that are physical hardware that you could use. So let's start off at the top right here. On the side, we have what is our action button, which is also known by default as the mute switch. It's the first button at the very top right here. You press this and it will mute your phone. Now, with the action button, though, you can change this later in settings, but by default, this is your mute sign. It has a little mute icon right there to let you know. Below that, you've got your volume rockers. You got volume up and volume down. Um, so just right here, you can use volume up and volume down to there. That's better lighting for you to see. So you've got your action button, which mutes the phone, your volume up and your volume down right here on the left side of the phone. And of course, it's got the plus icon to let you know you can turn the volume up and the minus icon to let you know that you can turn the volume down just like that. If we rotate the phone underneath here is our charging cable. This is USB-C. So you can take your charging cable and plug it in at the very bottom and then plug this in into your computer or into a USB-C compatible power brick to charge your iPhone. So that's very simple to do. All you have to do is just plug in the very bottom port right here to charge. You can also transmit data that way. So really cool. You've got your speaker grills, but this lightning connector right here or this lightning bolt, the symbol lets us know that we can charge our iPhone at the very bottom right there. 
On the side, for the iPhone 16, we have a brand new button right here called the camera control. And it's printed right here, and there it is. This is what it looks like. This is the camera control. We're gonna dive specifically into the camera control later into this beginner's guide to show you exactly how to use it, but to press it, it will open up the camera. And the best part is developers can take advantage of this, and you can map this to open up something like Instagram or Snapchat. You press it once and it instantly opens up the camera. This button is dedicated to the camera going forward. So um, we'll dive right into this capacitive touch sensor that's on the top here because um, you have a lot of cool features with this brand new iPhone 16 lineup that uses the camera control. And then at the very top here, we have our power button. You've got the power logo. You press this once and hold it down and it boots up the iPhone for the first time. So those are the different controls that are available on our phone. You'll notice on US models, there are no SIM card slots. The US iPhone 16s are completely eSIM. That's an electronic SIM that you'll get through your carrier by, by um, you know, a QR code or being able to set it up that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip this sticker off. Now that we've reviewed all the ports and all the features of the iPhone, let's take a look at the screen. So you just lift it up and there we go. We've got our brand new iPhone. You can see the, the glare and the reflection there of the light. And um, at the very top here, we've got our face ID sensors. We'll see what that looks like during setup um, to unlock our phone and to take selfies. We've got our speaker grill there at the very top. If we put it back in the light, maybe you can, can see clearly, but a speaker grill right there and the face ID sensors right there. So let's go ahead and boot this iPhone up for the very first time and grow, go through the setup process so you can see what it's like to set up an iPhone 16 for the very first time. I'm gonna go ahead and take the power cable here that we use to charge. I'm gonna put it to the side. And then you remember our power button is right here on the right side at the very top. So if I put it in light there, you can see the power button is nice and long. I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold onto that power button until I see the Apple logo. Um, and then we've got the Apple logo, I'm gonna let go. And now our iPhone 16 is booting up for the very first time. Now this can take a couple seconds here, maybe a minute or so, but this is the first time that the iPhone 16 is being uh, you know, processed and powered on. And you get a lovely hello screen that took less than 30 seconds to power up. It says hello in various different languages. And here is the quick start, the, the setup menu. If you have an iPhone nearby, you can bring it next to you and start to uh, you know instantly transfer everything to this phone. It'll pop up and we'll go through that setup process, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up this iPhone 16 for the very first time, as if you didn't have an iPhone before. Um, so all you have to do to get started is, you know, tap on the screen, you see the hello, you just swipe up to open. So I'm just gonna go ahead and swipe up to open here, and I have a menu option. I can select my language. So, um, you know, I've got English at the very top, Espanol, and various other languages. You can scroll down and see all the different language choices. I'm gonna go ahead and select English. So I select English just like that, and the next stage is to select your country or region. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the United States, but if you're in a different country or region, you can do that. You can select whichever one um, that you are from or that you're currently living in. So I'll go ahead and press the United States, and now it's asking about appearance. Appearance, so choose how you would like text and icons to look on your phone. And now it has a little di uh, diagram that lets you know what it looks like in a sliding scale here at the very bottom that lets you um, you know, choose and decide um, how you want it. So there are three options. By default, it looks like this, but we can take this sliding scale, put our finger on it and switch it over to medium. And then you'll see the icons and the everything on the screen gets a little bit bigger. Compared to default, it's kind of small, medium, it gets bigger, and then with large, it gets very large. So it lets you know with this little preview right here in the center, whether you like the bigger size of your icons and text, whether you want the medium size of icons, or whether you want to keep it on as default. For me, I like to keep it on by default, but you know, if you want to move it to medium or you want to move it to large, you can do that just by sliding the scale and then all of your text, icons, and um, you know, the, the way you interact with your phone will be set at that size 
during this setup process and after. So then when you start using your phone, you won't have to go dive into settings and say, make my text bigger. You can just do it right here in the setup process under appearance. So I'm gonna slide it back to default. And one cool thing though is um, it does, when you, you, can, you can move the sliding scale and you can see exactly what it looks like. So this is what large looks like. You can see that it bolts the text there compared to default, it's not as thick but we move it back to large and it gets really big. So you can take a look and see what settings you like the best, but for me, I'm gonna keep it on default and then I'm gonna press this blue continue button and move forward with this setup process. We've recently launched a brand new AppFind store at appfind.store and you can get access to some incredible products for your Apple devices. And we're gonna take a minute to take a look at all of these incredible products. Starting off with the AirPods case. You can't carry around your AirPods 2 all the time, and you can use this lovely case here to protect it and to add some style and color to it. So we can go ahead and, um, you know, open it up here and put it on our AirPods just like this. So it comes open, and we can pull it out, and it's into two pieces here. So you've got the top piece, which covers the top part of the AirPods. You just slide it over like that and it covers it just like that now um, i put it on backwards i'm gonna flip it around there we go so that way um, you can still have the hinge open up just like that and now we've got the bottom piece and the best part about this case is it lets you see the color uh, led light so when you charge it or when you turn it on the light comes on right there and it lets you see um, without covering it up so you can see the charging status or the pairing status just like that and of course it comes with this um, This little ring here that you can connect to your keychain or other um, you know, Devices, so there you go. That is the AirPods case for AppFind a really cool product that you can now get Using the AppFind store you can scroll down below or you can go to AppFind.store and get it today Next up, we've got two variations of an Apple Watch band. And if you've got an Apple Watch out there, um, you can get a stylish band here. I can go ahead and open up the band there. I'll go ahead and open up the second one here. So you just, it's got a nice little um, component here. You pull it open and you pull it down. And we've got two brand new bands that are now available in the AppFind store for your Apple Watch. So you can bring your Apple Watch into play here. And um, all you have to do is disconnect them here and start. Um, you've got them both kind of tied together in a way. So you can disconnect them both. And then undo the band. And now we've got each Apple Watch band just like that. And now um, we can slide them on. So you may be wondering, how do you slide on an Apple Watch band? All you have to do is just slide it from the corner and slide it in. And just like that, we've slid in an Apple Watch band. Then we can take the other end and we can slide that in. And now we've got this brand new Apple Watch band attached to our Apple Watch. And here's another version of what it looks like. So you've got eye popping colors here for your Apple Watch, your AirPods case, and then even better, we have them for the iPhone. So here we've got various cases for the iPhone. You've got the clear case, we've got a white case, a black case, and then even this blue, navy blue case color here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. Um, and the best part about this blue Mag MagSafe case is the fact that it wirelessly charges using MagSafe. So I can go ahead and pull the case out. I can bring in my iPhone and I can go ahead and pop the iPhone in just like that. And now we've got our case protected. It's got a cutout here for our power button and a cutout for the volume up, volume down, and the, uh, the, the action button. So if you're still rocking an iPhone 15 and not upgrading this year, you can go ahead and get this case now. And keep an eye on the AppFind store for the iPhone 16 cases that have the cutout button for the um, camera control. 
So that is the case. And you can see here, we've got several other case designs. Uh, we can go ahead and open those up one by one and check them out. So we've got a MagSafe one, 15. This is really cool, a black case here. We've got a white case. So we can go ahead and open this up. We've got all kinds of colors. So you can check it out on the appfind.store and pick whichever color you like best. And here we've got a clear one. So I'll go ahead and open up the clear one for you. Clear one, you can see right through it there. And there we go. So those are the case options we have for iPhone. We've got this white one, we've got a clear one, we've got the black one, and then this blue one here. So that's an overview of all of our brand new products at the AppFind store. You can get the Apple Watch Band, the um, AirPods case, or the iPhone case at appfind.store today. And um, it's really gonna be you know awesome. You'll be able to set it up on your new device and be protected and have a stylish uh, way. So these are all the new products that we have from the AppFind store, and we hope you enjoy them as much as we do. Here's a quick look at the AppFind store. You go to appfind.store and you can use the promo code AppFind to get 15% off your order. You can see all of the products we just checked out and you can purchase whichever ones you like the most. And don't forget to use that promo code AppFind for 15% off your order. So I'll go ahead and press continue. Now this is quick start. If you have another device like an iPhone nearby and you want to easily set them up, all you have to do is just bring that iPhone into the play and it's gonna ask you, hey, set up new iPhone. To set up your new iPhone, this will transfer your current settings. And all you have to do is unlock to continue. You may have to type in your passcode, um, but it will make it very easy to go ahead and set up your iPhone. In this particular video, we're not gonna use Quick Start. We're gonna set up without another device as if this is your first time. But if you do have a previous iPhone, if you are a previous iPhone user, that will simplify the process. If you go ahead and bring your phone into the picture, you unlock it and you start the Quick Start process, it will copy everything that's on your previous iPhone over to your brand new iPhone. So it's a really cool feature that I highly recommend if you are already an iPhone user. If you are not an iPhone user, you can even do this if you have an iPad. So if you have an Apple product, you can go ahead and transfer everything over. If you don't, you can say set up without another device. So it's a little blue tiny text at the very bottom. We're going to go ahead and press on that text and set it up as a brand new phone. And the next options that we have here is to choose our Wi-Fi network. So you want to connect to Wi-Fi. This way you can get the latest updates. You can um, you know, set up your phone properly. You can download apps. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off camera. I'm going to select my Wi-Fi network and then I'm going to go ahead and type in my Wi-Fi password. So I'll do this really quick, um, but you want to type in your Wi-Fi password and it'll start connecting to your Wi-Fi that's nearby. This is your wireless internet um, and it just takes a few minutes to activate your phone. So you can see how easy and quick that was for me to log in through Wi-Fi and to get set up on my brand new iPhone. So it says it takes a few minutes to activate your phone. And then this icon right here is the Apple um, data and privacy icon. It appears when it's collecting or possibly using your personal information. So anytime data is transmitted, it shows this icon icon um, and of course you can always be in control of when your data is submitted in your settings. So Apple believes privacy is a fundamental human right so every Apple product is designed to minimize collection and um, of course when it is collecting data this icon appears and it lets you know. So I'm going to go ahead and press the continue button to move forward. If you'd like to learn more about their data collection processes you can click the learn more or tap it right here below this big blue button. So I'm going to move forward, press the continue button, and now it's time to set up iPhone. So I can set this phone up for myself or I can set it up for a child in my family. I'm going to go ahead and set this up for myself as this is my iPhone. But if you have children, um, you can go ahead and set it up as a, uh, for a child and it will connect it to your Apple account. And it is absolutely stunning to be able to use parent controls and to be able to um, you know, connect your iPhone and make sure that um, the 
phone is set up properly and has the um, great systems and the Apple ecosystem specifically for your child. But for the purposes of this beginner's guide, we're gonna set up for yourself. So you press this big blue button that says set up for myself and you press it once and the first thing to set up is Face ID. So Face ID is an, um, an, an, it's an authentication method that unlocks your iPhone um, so you can use it securely. You can also use it for Apple Pay and to download apps and to sign into services and um, different apps that are on your phone. So you can set this up later or you can set it up now. If you want to set it up later, all you have to do is just press the set up later button and it will set up later. But for now, if you want to do it now, you press continue. And I highly recommend Face ID. It's one of the most secure ways to authenticate yourself on an Apple device. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this blue continue button. So it goes to sleep, I tap it to wake it up, and I press the blue continue button. So it says how to set up Face ID. First, position your face in the camera frame, then move your head in a circle to show all the angles of your face. So I'll go ahead and press this blue get started button and the camera will come up and it's looking for my face. It wants to position my face in the camera frame. So you can see the camera, I'm gonna bring it down to my face and now it can see my face and I have to move my head in a circle and it will light up in green when I've moved my head all the way around. So I've moved my head all the way around in a circle. Next up, use face ID with a mask. So I have an option to use face ID with a mask and um, I won't need to wear a mask during setup to do this or I can say don't use face ID with a mask. Um, but one thing that's key here is uh, it says face ID is most accurate when it's set up for full face recognition only. So you use face ID while wearing a mask, iPhone can recognize the unique features around the eyes to authenticate. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up with the mask and it'll identify you know, key features around my eyes. But if you don't set it up with the mask, you can set it up later um, or you don't have to set it up with the mask at all. But this is just in case you do have a mask on. So I'll go ahead and say use face ID with the mask and it's gonna want me to position my face into the camera one more time. So I'll look at it. I'll position my face within the frame and it wants me to move a little closer. So. I'm going to move a little closer. I'm super close to it. And I do the same thing. I look up and I tilt my head into a circle until all the green lines are achieved there. So now it wants me to remove my glasses for a third scan. So I remove my glasses and there's a blue continue button at the very bottom. So I'm going to angle it to my face again. I'm going to press the blue continue button. I have removed my glasses. I position my face in the frame and I look all the way around in a circle and it highlights in green when I've looked at it and I just rotate my head in a circle. And now Face ID is set up. So you can set up, you can add different pairs of glasses um, and add additional mask settings um, within the settings application on your iPhone. So now we've successfully set up the most secure way to unlock our phone and to authenticate Apple Pay purchases and also sign into various different apps. So now I'm just gonna click continue. If you wanna add different glasses, you can press add glasses, but for now I'm gonna press this blue continue button and we're gonna move on to the next phase of this setup process. So now it says create an iPhone passcode. So Face ID provides convenient and secure access by recognizing your face. Occasionally, your passcode will be required for validation. So if your face, um, face ID, if you lock your phone um, or restart your phone, it's gonna ask you to enter your passcode in order to use Face ID for the second time. Um, so you'll wanna remember this passcode because you'll have to enter it frequently. Um, you've got di different passcode options. You can create an alphanumeric passcode, a custom nu numeric passcode, or a four digit one, but six digit is by default. I'm gonna go ahead and enter my passcode off camera, and then it's gonna ask you to re-enter the passcode. So create an iPhone passcode, re-enter your passcode, and for security, I'm gonna add my passcode off camera, and then um, after you've entered it successfully, you'll move on to the next stage. So again, you'll wanna make sure you memorize this passcode because you'll need it to unlock your phone when it restarts. You'll need it sometimes to authenticate um, your phone so it can use Face ID in the future. And um, the next phase here is to transfer your apps and data. 
So you can get your existing apps information like photos, notes, and reminders onto your new device. You can do this in several ways. You can do it from an iCloud backup. You can do it from another phone, from a Mac or PC, or from an Android. And then um, you also have the option to don't transfer anything. And in the purpose of this video, I'm not going to transfer anything from any pre previous phone. I'm going to set this up as a brand new phone. But if you want to set this up with data from another phone, you can do that just by saying transferring from your Android or transferring from your Mac or PC or from another iPhone or from an iCloud backup. But in this case, I'm going to say don't transfer anything. It's going to be a brand new phone. Next up is the Apple account. So you can sign in um, using an email or phone number to use things like iCloud to back up your photos, messages, and um, your, your iPhone itself. You can access the App Store and download apps. And then other Apple services, maybe like Apple TV Plus or um, you know, other things like Apple Music. So you would need to log into your Apple account to access any of these Apple services. Now, it's not required. You do not need to log into an Apple account to use your iPhone. Um, but if you want to, you can, and it helps out when you have all of these additional Apple features. So here I can enter my email or phone number. I can say forgot password, or if I don't have an account, I can make one. You just tap on that text there, and you can say I forgot my password if you did, or you can say create a free Apple account, or you can set up later in settings. And here's a good little overview of what you can do with an Apple account. An Apple account is an account you can use to access everything Apple. You can sign into all Apple services with a single account and password. You get all your content on your devices automatically with iCloud. That's a really cool feature where it allows you to, to sync between devices. If you do something on your Mac, it syncs it through iCloud and appears on your phone. If you do something on your iPad, it appears on your phone. If you do something on your phone, it appears on your Mac and your iPhone. It syncs and it's like magic. Find the best selection of apps in the App Store. If you want to download third-party apps, you're going to need to have an Apple ID so you can purchase those apps even if they're free and they can link with your account and download onto your phone. Next up is shop for music, movies, TV shows, and more in the iTunes Store. So if you want to purchase your music or your TV shows, you can do that in the iTunes Store. You can access all of your photos on all your devices with iCloud Photos. Really magical how it appears um, between all of your devices. And then you can send unlimited text messages to other iPhones, iPads, Macs, and users with iMessage, a really cool um, way to text and communicate with other people that have Apple devices. And then, of course, you can make video calls. People that have iPhones, iPads, Macs with FaceTime, a really cool way to connect. Um, last but not least, here we have shop for your favorite books and sync bookmarks and notes across your devices. So you've got the Books app, great for e-readers that love to connect and um, use the e-reading book application, the books, Apple Books, to do that. So that's what an Apple account offers you. I highly recommend setting up one in the setup process if you don't have one. In this particular video, we're going to set up later. Um, but if you do have one, you just enter your username and password. If you don't have one, you create a free one. Or if you don't want to, you can uh, say, you know, set up later. There's also this blue other sign in options at the very bottom where you can use another device to sign in or you can use multiple accounts. Maybe you want one for your iTunes purchases and one for, um, you know, your iCloud photo library. So I'm going to hit cancel. I'm going to say don't have an account. And the purpose of this video, I'm going to set up later in settings. Um, and if you have one, I highly recommend logging in now during the setup process. And if you don't have one, I highly recommend creating one. So I'll go ahead and say set up later. It's going to ask me, uh, are you sure you don't want to set up? And I'm going to say don't use because for this video, I'm not going to sign into an Apple ID. But if you have one at home or you don't have one, I highly recommend signing in with one. So I'm going to say don't use. And now it's going to ask about terms and conditions. So of course, you'll need to agree to all the lovely terms and conditions for iOS and Apple and the warranty. So I'll go ahead and hit agree at the very top there. Next up is update your iPhone automatically. Future software updates will be automatically downloaded and installed for you as they're released. You can manage them in the software update settings. So you can go ahead and hit the continue button or you can say only download automatically. So if you press the only download automatically, it won't install them automatically. But if you hit continue, it will, um, they'll be automatically downloaded and installed as they're released without you having to even do anything. 
So I highly recommend hitting the blue button so you're always up to date. You have all the latest security fixes and you don't have to think about installing them. But if you don't want to install them automatically, you can just press the tiny text at the bottom that says only download automatically. So I'll go ahead and hit the continue button. And next up is iMessage and FaceTime. People can contact you on all your devices with iMessage and FaceTime using your phone number and email address. So this number uh, the, of the iPhone will be sent to Apple to set up iMessage and FaceTime. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit not now because I don't have cell service on this phone and I didn't log in with an Apple ID. So I don't have, um, you know, if I hit continue, it's gonna allow me to, to move forward to turn those on. But um, since I don't have any of those services set up with Apple ID or cell service on here, I'm gonna hit not now. Next up is location services. Location services allows maps and other apps and services like Find My to gather and use data, including your location. Highly recommend this on. This is perfect if you want to like use an app that can find the, the nearest store or the nearest um, you know review of a store. You can use location services to be like, where's the store at? Um, and it will find that. And then, of course, Find My can, um, if you share your location with other people, um, it can use your location to share that with others. So this is a personal decision. If you want to share your, your location with apps, then you can go ahead and press this big blue button that says turn on location services. If you do not want any applications knowing where your location is, then say set up later and your location services will not be turned on. But for me, I would turn this on because it's helpful and I think it's perfect. So you can set up cellular. So cellular is, of course, your wireless network, you know, your AT&T, your, your Verizon, um, your T-Mobile, um, or, or if you have another provider that's international, um, you can go ahead and set up cellular. Now, of course, here in the U.S., you have to use an eSIM. If you're outside of the U.S., you'll probably just be able to pop in a SIM card because your models have SIM card slots still built into the phones. And then, of course, we'll be able to um, transfer from a nearby phone. So I can take my phone that's nearby and I can transfer um, all of the cellular services like the eSIMs that are currently in it and move them over to this new phone. Or I can just scan my carrier's QR code or I can call them up or go into their store and they can help me get set up on cellular. But for an iPhone here in the United States, you absolutely need to have an eSIM. It's the only way to activate the phone. And it's easy if you have another iPhone, you can transfer it over or you can just scan the QR code on your carrier's website um, or on their app or go into their uh, brick and mortar store and they can help you get set up on cellular. It's not something you have to do now. I'm not gonna set this phone up in cellular, so I'm gonna press the setup later in settings. But for you, you probably want to set up your phone if you just got it, you wanna move over your eSIM for your, from your previous iPhone or you wanna activate cellular service on your brand new phone, you would do that by using the QR code from your carrier. So just ask your carrier how to get a QR code to set up an, an electronic SIM on your phone and you'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and set this up later in settings. I'll press this blue button and it's just gonna confirm, do I wanna skip the eSIM? eSIM stands for electronic SIM. It's you know a hardware SIM built right into the phone so you don't actually have to put in a SIM card ex externally. It's already built into the phone. You just scan your QR code and it activates your cellular service on board. Um, so you can set it up later in cellular settings and it will not be able to make phone calls or connect to the internet uh, with cellular data until I set up an eSIM. So I'm going to go ahead and skip it for the purpose of this video, but if you already have your eSIM and your cellular QR code, you can go ahead and hit cancel or you can go ahead and just transfer that over and set that up right here within the settings. So I'm going to go ahead and press the skip button. Today we're going to be checking out Surfshark for our lovely promotion where you can get an incredible VPN for about $2.19 for their 24 month promotion. I'm going to go ahead and download this um, onto our phone and show you the setup process, but you can use the QR code on screen to take advantage of this deal and get access to Surfshark's virtual private network. You can secure your online browsing. It uses you know, protection and, um, and you know, hides your IP address and you can get all kinds of great features to make sure that you stay secure when you're using the internet. 
and you go to appfind.org slash Surfshark or use the QR code on screen to take advantage of the deal that we have, the promotion that allows you to get um, Surfshark for 24 months at just $2.19. So let's go ahead. Um, uh, this app is almost downloaded and I'll show you what it's like to set it up on your brand new iPhone. So this is definitely one of the first things I do when I get my new iPhone. I log in, I um, you know set up my virtual private network so I stay secure whether I'm browsing at home on Wi-Fi or whether whether I'm on the go on someone else's Wi-Fi network or on 5G, when I have Search Shark enabled, I'm safe and it's fast and it's reliable. So I'm going to go ahead and open this application up. After you've clicked the link in the chat or in the description below, the surfshark uh, the, the appfind.org slash surfshark, or you scan the QR code on the screen and sign up, you'll be able to download the app onto your phone. And then here it's got two options to create an account or log in. You would have most likely already created an account when you redeemed uh, the promotion on the QR code or on the link in the description. So you would hit the login button and it asks you to continue with Google, Apple, or your username and password that you set up originally. After you have successfully logged in, this is what it will look like on your screen on your brand new iPhone 16. Now you may be wondering, what do you do? So what it's recommending is you to connect to a virtual private network in a certain location. Now your IP address can be from almost anywhere around the world that they have service. You can scroll down and it looks like I tapped on one, I tapped on um, one and it instantly opens it up and tells me more about that. So I highly recommend picking something that's local or nearby because what will happen is when you're using your virtual private network, um, websites will kind of detect your location. And if it detects that you're very far away from where you actually live, sometimes it may not let you log in or it may block you because you, you know, you wouldn't want someone logging into your account that's not actually you. So sometimes it can be very challenging to get around certain things like that. Um, one of my favorite features is the multi-hop. This way you can, um, you know, have secure connections from multiple directions. Um, and, you know, I can scroll down, I can select something like um, we've got United States and Canada, the United States, New York, and Canada, Toronto. We can tap on the multi-hop and it will need permission in order for us to get started with the VPN. So let's go ahead and authorize the Surfshark and get permission. We'll hit the continue button at the very bottom. And now it's going to ask us, Surfshark would like to add VPN configurations. Since we do want our VPN to be connected, we'll press this allow button right here. And then it will take us to our settings where we'll have to enter our passcode. So I'm going to enter our passcode off camera here just to say secure and then it will take us back to the app and it will start connecting and I'm gonna hide my IP address at the top right here but this is what it looks like in the top right your IP address pops up and then it says connected and safe and then it shows you your connection time. And then at the very bottom, you can see in the bottom left here, you've got the country that you're connected with, US, New York, and then you've got it via um, Toronto, Canada. So then you can press disconnect at the very bottom. You can pause it on the right. I'm gonna swipe down so my IP address goes away. So you can always disconnect at the very bottom. You can pause it right here, or you can scroll and search for another uh, location that you want. So you've got multiple locations here at the top, and you can select whichever location that you wanna connect through to keep your data secure. So this is Surfshark, and it's our lovely promotion that we've got going on right now. You can scan the code on the screen, or you can go to appfind.org slash Surfshark to take advantage of our incredible offer. And I hope you enjoyed the virtual private network, and it keeps you secure. This is one of my favorite products that I use every single day to stay secure on the internet. And now we'll move on to our next phrase. And, and the next screen is screen time. So screen time is a great way to reflect on how often you use your phone. You can activate screen time and it will track how many notifications you get, how many times you open up an app, how much time is spent within that app. And you get a weekly and daily report that lets you know, hey, today you spent a lot of time scrolling in uh, LinkedIn or Twitter or X or Instagram, you spent about 25% of your day on this app and about 50% of your app uh, usage came from um, this particular notification. So it's very helpful to be able to get these insights and to review these screen time apps that you're currently using because it breaks it down app by app, day by day, week by week, and you can get all the analytics needed in order to review your screen time. This is also perfect for children's 
phones and setting up parent controls. You can set up limits and say, hey, you can only use the iPhone and this particular app for about 30 minutes a day. And you can um, even set up limits for yourself. If you exceed over 30 minutes a day, a little screen will come up and be like, hey, you hit your limit. So screen time is a healthy way to manage your relationship with your phone because you don't want to be completely addicted to it. But you can come in here and get a weekly report with all the insights that let you know exactly how often you're using your phone, what, what apps are you using the most, and then you can take that data to be mindful and more aware so you're not constantly on your phone and just glued to it all the time. So I highly recommend turning on screen time because screen time will allow you to reflect on your screen usage. And um, of course, you don't have to. If you don't want to, you just press set up later in settings, this very bottom text, and it won't turn it on. But for me, I'm going to press this blue continue button because I think this is a very helpful feature. And then next up is iPhone analytics. So it can help improve the products if you share your data. Now this is not required. You do not need to share iPhone analytics, but it says all data is collected with privacy um, preserving techniques such as differential, differential privacy, and it's not associated with you or your Apple account. And you can help improve products and services by allowing analytics of usage data from your iPhone. And you can change this decision at any time later and settings. I'm gonna go ahead and press this blue share with Apple button, but you don't have to. If you want to share how often you use your phone with Apple, you can press the blue button. If you don't wanna share how often you use your phone with Apple, you press this don't share and they won't collect the data. Um, but you know, this is a personal decision. You can pick what you feel is best, whether you wanna share this analytic data with Apple. Typically they use this data to improve their own products and to see you know, what, um, what people are using on their phone and make better products. And I, um, me personally, I think Apple's a very private company and they respect that decision. So I don't mind sharing my personal iPhone analytics, but it's not a requirement. So if you don't want to, you just press don't share at the very bottom. But if you do want to share this data with Apple, you press this big blue button that says share with Apple. Next up is app analytics, and this allows developers to understand how you used their apps. So in the previous screen, we gave permission to Apple to review the analytics of their own apps and how we use our iPhone. This screen allows a developer to see how we use their apps. So it allows us to share analytics with specific developers so they can improve their apps that they've made. These are developers that are in the App Store. So when we download an app from the App Store and we use it, it's going to send that analytic data back to the developer, the person that made that application, and then they'll be able to review and see how um, you use their application if you press this blue button that says share with app developers. So this allows app developers to see analytics of how often you're using your app, what you're doing on your app, um, and it's a decision that you don't have to make. You don't have to share this data with them. Um, so you just press the don't share button at the very bottom if you do not want to share this data with them. If you do want to share this data with them, then you press the share with app developers button, the blue one right here. And again, just to recap, this will take analytic data of you using their app, a developer app, a third party app that is in the app store. So um, this is great. Like say for example, that app has a malfunction. You're using it and it crashes. If we press this blue share button, it's going to log that crash and automatically send it to the app developer and say, hey, this person was using an app and they tried to update their status and it crashed. But if you don't press that, don't, don't if you press the don't share button, it won't send that data to the app developer. But if you do press the share button, it will. So this is a personal decision you can make based off what you feel is best for your phone. If you want to share the app developer data analytics, the crash data and the app activity, then you press this blue share button. If you do not, you press the don't share button and it will not send any data regarding your app usage to third party developers. I want to go ahead and press the share button um, so developers can get crash reports and um, improve their apps. So I'll press the big blue button. Next up is light or dark display. So you've got various modes here for your iPhone 16. 
You can have a light mode or dark mode. And my best part is when you tap on dark mode, look what happens. It switches everything to dark. So if you like your phone to be in dark mode, you can put dark mode. If you like your phone to be in light mode, you can put it in light mode. These are system wide settings. So if you have an app, that already has dark mode compatibility. If your system is switched to dark mode, you're only gonna see that app in dark mode. Now there's this third feature at the very bottom that says auto, which will automatically switch your phone from light to dark mode based on the sunrise and the sunset that's currently out. So it's really cool um, if you want best of both worlds. So in the morning, you'll have light mode and then when it gets dark, you'll have dark mode. Me personally, I'm a fan of dark mode everything, matte black everything. I love black, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep it on dark mode going forward. But if you want it on light mode going forward, you just leave it on light mode. If you want it on dark mode, you press dark mode. If you want it to switch between the two, you press the auto. So you can pick this, it's a personal decision for you, how you want the setting of your phone to be on your brand new iPhone 16. So I'm gonna go ahead there and set, set it up for dark mode. I'm gonna press this blue continue button and move forward with the setup process. Next up is silent mode. You can toggle silent mode on and off or check its status and control center. So the silent switch is right here. We can just press it once and it will enter silent mode. You'll see it right there at the, um, the dynamic island. It modifies itself when you press the button. I press it once and it says ring. I press it one more time and it says ring. Um, so you have to hold it for silent. So a little notification came up. So you, that's a little, um, they don't want accidental presses. So you just hold it down all the way and it goes to silent. And then you hold it down and it goes back to ring. So you have to hold and press the action button in, in order for it to go to silent mode. But it says you can toggle the silent mode on and off or check its status in control center. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. In today's promotion, we're talking about Incogni, an incredible way to stay safe on the internet. You can get Incogni with our 50% discount using our promotion link, appfind.org slash Incogni. That brings the price down to $7.49 per month on their annual plan. Let's take a look at what it does. It allows you to be safer on the internet and it lowers your risk for identity theft. All you have to do is just make an account, you type in your credentials and your information, and you grant them the right to work for you and they'll go you know navigate they'll send multiple requests across multiple databases to remove your account information that's on the internet and publicly available so it's an incredible way uh, to stay safe on the internet and with the app find promotion at appfind.org slash incogni you can save 50 percent on their annual prime price it's traditionally 14 dollars and 98 cents per month but with our discount you can get it for seven dollars and 49 cents per month on the annual plan and if you don't want the annual plan, you can do the monthly plan for $14.98 a month. So it's an incredible way to stay safe on the internet. And that way, you know, people that are trying to either scam you or steal your identity won't be able to do so because Incogni will be, be there to protect you and to, um, you know, request all of your data on the internet that they can find to be removed from, um, you know, those internet profiles. So you can check it out today at Incogni appfind.org slash incogni is the link to go to and you can get the lovely plan with 50 percent off for seven dollars and 49 cents per month on the annual plan and next up is the action button we were just talking about the action button the action button is jam-packed because you can press and hold to turn silent mode on and off and you can customize the action button to open up the camera turn on the flashlight or access a favorite iphone feature so this is one of the most powerful and, and diverse buttons because it can do almost anything you can even create a siri shortcut and map it to this button and have it run in automation so with the action button, um, we can press the customize if we want to modify it right now. If you want it to remain the silent switch, then you can just press not now. But we're gonna press this blue customize button and see all of the cool features of the action button. So it's a big feature of the iPhone 16 and the iPhone 15. It can be a silent mode and you just swipe to see all the features. It can be a focus, so you can silence notifications and filter distractions. We can swipe over some more. It can be the camera button. It can open up the camera to capture a moment. But we also have the camera control at the very bottom, so we don't need it to be a camera button anymore. We have a flashlight. We can turn on the extra light when we need it. 
We have a voice memo. We can record personal notes, musical ideas, and more. We can recognize music, find out what song is playing nearby or on your iPhone with Shazam. And then we have translate. We can translate phrases or have a conversation with someone in another language. And we've got the magnifier. Turn your iPhone into a magnifying glass to zoom in and out and detect objects near you. So this is the action button in the iPhone 15 and the iPhone 16. You can come over here, you can customize it to all of these lovely features. But my favorite part is you can do a shortcut and you can have an iPhone automation in the Siri shortcuts application and it will activate that automation for you. You can have it do an accessibility feature, quickly use an accessibility feature, or you can have it do absolutely nothing at all. So those are all of the options for the iPhone 16's action button, a really cool customizable button. You can pick whichever you want just by whichever one you want just by scrolling around and selecting it. So for this purpose of this demo, I'm going to keep it on the silent mode, but you can pick it whichever feature you want and customize it to your liking. So I'll go ahead and press continue. It's going to stay on silent mode. And here is the star of the show. We've got the camera control. Click camera control to open a camera, then click again to use camera control as your shutter. I'm not sure that it will work right now in the setup process because we're still setting up the phone, but we will definitely dive into that once this phone is set up. You just press it one time and it opens the camera app, and then you click it again to use the camera control as the shutter. Really cool feature, and I can't wait to dive in later in this video. Next up, we're gonna press this continue button and we've just learned about the camera control. It highlights it for us, it gives us a little demo. You press it once and the camera opens up. We'll press continue. Next up is Siri. Siri helps you find information and in getting things done just by asking. And later this year, Apple Intelligence will come out and Siri will be even more smarter. So just say Siri and then your request. Or you can press and hold the side button and speak when Siri appears. I'll go ahead and press the continue button, this blue button to set up Siri. You can set it up later in settings if you don't wanna set it up, but I think Siri is helpful for certain actions like setting alarms, timers, being able to review my calendar and reminders. So I'll go ahead and press continue. So you can select a voice, choose a voice for features like Siri, Maps, and Safari. You can manage this in Siri settings. So you can just- The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun. The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun. The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun. The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun. The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun. The colors of the sky. The colors of the sky fade. The colors of the sky. I don't know which one to choose. There's five stars begin to shine through the clear night. There's five versions of Siri voice. I have no idea. I'm just gonna go with voice option number one since it's there. Oh, there's a choose for me button. That is so cool. Cause I don't like. I don't have a preference of either of these five. They all sound great. I'm just gonna say the choose. The colors of the sky fade with the setting sun okay. as it, the stars begin to shine. I press this light night. button at the very bottom and it shows for me option number three. Now it says, say Siri, how's the weather? To my phone and did it pick it up? Siri, yeah, oh, didn't quite get that. Let's try again. Siri, how's the weather? Hey Siri, send a message. Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Hey Siri, get directions home. Siri, play some music. Siri is ready. So I said all those phrases and it heard me, it activated and registered my voice. And now, and now Siri on my HomePod is speaking. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait. Hey Siri, stop. All right. So we're all good there. Now I'm gonna press this blue continue button. So once you're talking, um, you can add another request without saying his name again. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the continue button. And now it's asking if we want to share the audio recordings for Siri. So improve Siri and dictation. I can go ahead and, um, you know, Apple will be able to review these recordings if I say share audio recordings to improve the products of Siri. And if you don't want this, you press this not now button at the very bottom that just says not now or you just press the share audio recordings if you do want to share those recordings. Next up is emergency SOS. You can press and hold the emergency SOS button. So you press and hold the side button 
in either the volume button to make an emergency call. It's got crash detection. If your iPhone detects a severe car crash, it will automatically try to call emergency services. And in select countries, you've got emergency SOS via satellite. When available, iPhone can try to text emergency services via satellite if it can't connect to cellular. So we'll go ahead and press continue. We're aware of all of the emergency SOS features and we're in. Welcome to iPhone. We have gone through the setup process and successfully set this iPhone up for the first time. All we have to do to enter the iPhone is just swipe up to get started. And just like that, we have our brand new iPhone in an alert. It wants us to set up cellular. I'm going to go ahead and press not now, but if you do have your eSIM or your QR code ready, you can press the setup button and set up cellular. But for the purpose of this video, we're not setting up cellular on this phone and we can swipe over. We can see all the default apps that come on the iPhone. We can see the app library. And this is our brand new iPhone 16. Really cool that we were able to successfully set it up for the very first time. Now let's dive in and give you a complete tour of how to use this iPhone. So by default, this is the button that locks that phone. We lock it and we're just on, on by default. We've got the always on display and we've got our time and date. When we look up, we can activate face ID just by looking at our phone, swiping up and unlocking just like that. I'm gonna um, give you a better look at that. So when you look up at your phone, you'll see it just automatically unlocks. It happens very fast. So you don't even have to think about it. You just look at it and it unlocks. That's how Face ID works. Now, if Face ID fails, it will ask you to enter your passcode. So that's really important to do. Um, on the lock screen here, we've got the flashlight and the camera button. But now that we have camera control, I'm a big fan of changing these buttons because to access the camera now, you just press this, you just press the camera control button on the side right here and the camera automatically opens up just like that. We've got different uh, photogra photography, photographic styles we'll set up later. Um, so you can access the camera control um, just by pressing this button once and it opens up the camera. Now that we have a camera control option on the side right here, we press this button to access the camera. We can change this button that's right here on the very bottom right. We have to unlock the phone first, so I'm gonna look at it, it unlocks. I hold down on the phone and then I press, I press customize. And then I press lock screen. And then I press this minus button and it deletes the camera. And then I press a plus button and I can change it to any one of these actions like home, translate, shortcut, magnifier, recognize music. I'm gonna move it to the calculator. And then you have to press this done button at the very top to save it. So you just press done. And now instead of the camera button in the bottom right, it's a calculator. And I just press it and it instantly opens my, my calculator. And if I wanna get back to the camera, all I have to do is just press the camera control button and it instantly brings up the camera just like that. So that is really cool that you can now customize your lock screen. So I'm gonna unlock with Face ID. You can also customize things on your, your home screen just by holding down and pressing the edit home screen button. And now you can move apps around if you wanna move that around just like this. You can add, you can press this edit button at the very top. You can add a widget or you can customize. So we can add a new widget here. We can add a clock widget. You can swipe around, see all the various different versions. I like this clock right here. We can add that widget. Now we've added a widget to our home screen. So you can make this home screen your very own just by holding down onto an app icon and then pressing edit home screen. And you can make any modifications to your home screen. You can press this edit button at the very top. You can add a widget, you can customize, you can do new backgrounds, you can do dark mode icons. You can just press dark mode right here at the very bottom and now all the icons go to dark mode. You've got automatic, you've got tinted, you can change the tint. But my favorite is of course dark mode. So I'm gonna leave it in dark mode and I'm gonna tap out of it and now all of our icons are in dark mode. So you can customize your iPhone 16's home screen or lock screen. All you have to do is just hold down on it, edit home screen, and then you've got this edit button in the top that lets you make even bigger customizations or adding a widget or even editing pages. So really cool features that we've got to modify. But now let's take a deeper look at this camera control. The camera control right here, we press it and it opens up the camera. Now, one press at the top here takes a photo. Holding it down takes a video. So just like this, 
it starts to record a video. And another feature that we've got is it has a touch capacitor. So you can swipe across it by double tapping and now we can zoom in. So we're zooming in to the screen there. So you've got all kinds of features with the camera control. So you just tap on it lightly and you're able to dive right into the settings. So this does take some time to get used to um, because you know it's a brand new button but again you press to film once, um, you press to take a photo and you hold it down to get access to all the, the different zooming controls and more. So that is the camera control in the iPhone 16, a really cool feature that they've released. And the best part is that it's available on all iPhone 16 models, whether you have the regular or the Pro. So now we can come in here and check out some other cool features of the phone. So in iOS 18, you can customize your control center. All you have to do is just swipe down from the right and you've got a brand new design for the iPhone 16 control center. You can swipe up, you can swipe down, um, you can have multiple pages. So this is the music page, this is um, the connectivity page. And the best part is you can swipe down and continue swiping until you reach your favorite page. So you can swipe down and you can change these pages just by continuing your swipe all the way down. And then when you land on your favorite page, you can stop and then it picks it. So really cool feature. But I'm gonna show you how to customize it. You swipe down from the top right, you tap on your favorite page, and then here there is a plus button. And you can come in here and customize any of these features. You can make them big, you can make this one uh, longer, um, this one bigger, it just made a new page for us. You can have as many different controls as you want. There is an add a control button at the very bottom here. So you just add a new control um, or you it went out of it. So we press the plus button one more time or we swipe down, we press the plus button. And then if you type, if you select a um, widget, an empty widget, it will exit the edit. So if I tap right here, it exits. And then I have to hit the plus button and I can press this add control button. I have to be very careful not to select um, the empty selection option. So it will exit. But then I can come in here, I can add a voice memo. And then I can make voice memo big. So I've made the voice memo right here and the QR code scan right here. I can press add a control and I can come over here. We can add a low power mode control. You can make it as big as you want and then um, then you just tap on the empty circles to exit out. So now I have a completely customizable control center. This is a very first thing for the iPhone. And I think it is really cool. You just swipe down and you've got all of your control center pages and all of your different widgets that you want and make it completely yours on your iPhone 16. A really cool feature that they've baked right here into the brand new phone. Um, so, of course, you can come in here, you can customize your phone, home screen, your lock screen. We've got camera control. We've got iOS 18. Um, they've redesigned the Photos application. So you can check out the Photos application. And um, you've got this brand new section right here that shows recent days, people and pets, pinned collections, um, memories, trips, featured photos, media types, utilities albums and more. So I highly recommend checking out the photos application because that's brand new. And when Apple intelligence drops later this year, you can definitely check out our videos on that because that's going to redefine the way we get summarized notifications, being able to um, ask Siri questions. So I'm really excited for when that drops. Want to promote your business in front of tech enthusiasts? You can sponsor AppFind to get a shout out on a video or even your own dedicated video. To learn more, see our rate card and request a sponsorship. You can click our link in the description to Passion Fruit to learn more and inquire about a sponsorship. But this has been a complete beginner's guide of the brand new iPhone 16 Pro Max. We've done a complete setup process and we've checked out the best new features on the iPhone 16 Pro, including the camera control options and the new control center and the dark mode icons. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button and let us know what your favorite feature is of the, of the iPhone 16 in the comments below. And if you're not subscribed, be sure to smash that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to figure out when we release our next technology video. We love producing these for you and can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.